welcome to A Better You, your one-stop shop for everything self-improvement, self-insight and self-care. I'm Emily and today we're going to talk about the neuroscience of language learning. A really core skill for language learners or polyglots is to become masters at learning new things, at growing and developing yourself. So what can you do to ensure your language learning is as effective as possible? Let's take a step back and look at the neuroscience of learning. No matter what you'd like to learn, whether it be playing a guitar, how to fly a rocket, or learning a new language, the key thing that you will need to do is form new neural pathways in your brain. The first time you do anything, you don't have a neural pathway for that activity. It's like you're walking through a forest and the path has yet to be constructed, so you have to make that path. When you first make the path, it won't be very clear. So there's not gonna be directions, there's not gonna be coffee shops. This is a very rough path. And so you have to strengthen it over time and clear that path further, making that connection stronger. The brain consists of billions of neurons that connect with one another. You learn something, you connect these neurons together. You can learn things short or long-term. Short-term learning is achieved through chemical changes. These are short-term chemical reactions that will allow you to retain the information for a short-term basis. However, long-term learning is much more structural in nature and can actually increase specific parts of your brain while other parts of the brain decrease in size. The key difference between learning something short or long-term is spaced repetition, that is, practice. Neuroplasticity that is, the ability to grow and change, is possible at any age. In fact, our brains change and adapt every single day. So how can you increase your neuroplasticity to improve your learning outcomes? You can do this with the ages model. That is, attention, generation, emotion, and spacing. If you're watching and enjoying this video so far, if I could give you a quick request just to subscribe below and like the video. Attention is ensuring that when we're learning, we are focusing purely on the topic that we are trying to learn. So no multitasking, no looking at textbooks while listening to music, focusing purely in on that learning where possible. So where do you do your language learning? Is it a quiet space? Are there distractions? Are you doing active types of learning and are you fresh and ready to learn? Or are you potentially doing some of your learning when you're tired and less able to give your full attention? For optimal learning, your space should be clean and you should have the appropriate attention and energy to really focus in at the task at hand. So making sure that this is potentially the first thing that you do every day after maybe coffee. Generation is where you generate meaningful connections between the things that you're learning and things that you already know. Now, this can be quite time consuming from a language learning perspective and kind of slows down your vocabulary learning. However, it does ensure that you retain that vocabulary for a lot longer. So there is a bit of a way up here as to how you're going to manage your time. But if you can generate those meaningful connections and examples of this would be in Turkish, the word for screw is vida. So when I was learning that particular piece of vocabulary, I connected it to tornabida, which is screwdriver in Turkish. When I was learning the word tornavida, I connected it with the word tornado in English and it has that same whir in motion. And again, you can see this is still very fresh in my mind, those, those images. So the generation of those connections is really, really key to retaining that knowledge. Comment below and let us know if you have any particular connections in the language that you're learning that could help other people. Next is emotions. And this is a really key one, I think. What is your motivation for learning the language? Do you have friends in the country? Do you have a lover in the country? Is work motivating you to learn the language? To travel to the country or live in the country? What will it feel like when you reach your language learning goals? 
the stronger the emotions that you can attach to the learning, again, the more effective the learning will be from a neuroscience perspective. Side note, from the emotions point of view, um, one of the weird tricks that I use to really bring this to life um, is to practice fake conversations in my target language. It sounds ridiculous, but it really works because it A, makes you realise where you're missing particular words from a conversational point of view, but also gives you those quick scenarios in your head. And again, those words that you're using for those really stick. Does anyone else do the fake conversations? Please do comment below so I don't feel absolutely crazy on this. And last, but definitely not least, is spacing. And that is repetition over time, which I'm sure as language learners, you've probably heard before. Questions that you're forming in your brain follow the use it or lose it rule. So essentially, the more you practice, the better your grasp of the knowledge will become. However, this should be repeated, not just on the same day, for example, but over a course of time. And the longer that practice time is, the stronger that pathway will become. So again, going back to that forest analogy, you are building cafes on the side of the path at this stage. An app I used to do this is LinkQ, and that's because it does give you that spaced repetition. So you read through articles or potentially watch videos that have subtitles attached to them, and you can do that from YouTube. The vocabulary that you learn from that is then put into a vocabulary tracker, and you practice that over time. And again, until you're really comfortable with that vocabulary, it stays in that, in that vocabulary tracker, so it's a really great spaced repetition tool. And that, in summary, is how you make the most of your language learning time. Focus your attention, connect your knowledge, make it emotional and practice regularly. Imagine the spaghetti junctions that are going on in a polyglot's mind from that forest path analogy. Thank you for watching today. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like below and please do comment and let us know what you'd like to see in the future from us. Also love it if you could subscribe so that we can keep providing you with content and we can keep in touch as we learn our languages. It would also be amazing if you do have any language learning friends, any polyglot friends, if you would share this video with them so that more people can benefit from the neuroscience of learning. Thank you.